there's a backlog of history here. So when Eric and I kind of, you know, talked a little bit on the phone about rocket photography, I said, you know, I shot the first um, three space shuttle, yeah. you know, yeah. launches and landings. America went back to space. And there it is. I mean, look at the difference in technology. That's ectochrome wow. shot with a yes. 1200 millimeter lens, which mm -hmm. with the lens shade would be about as almost as long as this table. Wow. And it came in two sections. You had to screw it together. And I was on the roof of the fire station at Edwards Air Force Base and nobody knew what this thing was gonna look like coming out of the sky. And I remember a television cameraman picked it up first. It was this tiny burning dot in the sky. Mm -hmm. And it was, at that point, it was a flying stone. You know, it was, it was just a rock dropping out of the heavens. It had no engine power. And you know, and Young and Crippen were piloting that down, back down to earth, and nobody knew what it was gonna be like. And it hit the dust, you know, made dust trails. You know, that's the 1200 through heat waves. Oh, yes. You know, uh, and out there in the desert. And then, you know, on to launches, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This was a, uh, a launch where I lost six cameras. Um, six motor-driven Nikons uh, got destroyed. I won't go into the, to the sorry history oh, of yes. that, but wind and weather can conspire against you. Because as you know, your remote cameras yep. are the valuable cameras because yep. the man positions are, yeah. oh, just, you know, they're way far away. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't get good weather, good crisp light, you know, it's very hard to shoot effectively. Back in the day, they used to tow the space shuttle yeah. through the communities of um, California. Uh, this was a big deal, the way they coated the space shuttle. That's a, that's a silica cube, and you can heat it. That's red hot mm -hmm. glowing, but you can hold it with your bare fingers so cool. because it would, it would uh, dissipate the heat so quickly. And then, of course, I was, I was put in the loop by National Geographic as the STS-95 photographer of record, John Glenn's Return Ooh, to man, Space. That was a big one. And um, I got close to the senator. He was an incredibly decent man. I spent 17 weeks always looking for the human moments. You know, they're not really supposed to eat donuts, you know, um, in, this, in the simulator, you know. Um, you know, training at the age of 78, training, you know. And then I got close to the senator, and uh, when Clinton visited, John came to me and he said, Joe, stick close to me. I'm going to divert. Because they, you know, presidential visit, everything is orchestrated. And so we're walking, and I'm hovering, hovering, hovering. And John goes, uh, Mr. President, I'd like you to come with me. And it was totally off, off the hook. Secret Service went uh, nuts. Yeah, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, wait, 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 wait where's the president point? going? And so John, being the wily, wonderful individual he was, he put space food in a microwave in the, in the space shuttle simulator, and he took Clinton in there, and he's feeding him space food. Uh, that's cool. And I'm the only photographer there. That's you know, awesome. the Washington Press wow. Corps was going nuts. Um, and that's Ralph Morse, one of my heroes, the legendary photographer who photographed the original Merc 7, and he's back doing um, John's portrait. And John, you know, and then I had opportunities to do things like I was able to light and dive in the NBL, which was a huge process. You so, dove down in there? Yeah, yeah. Safety training like crazy. I had to pass a commercial dive test, 100 question test. I had to take a physical. Uh, dive test with uh, one of the safety divers there, which was probably the hardest dive test I've ever had to take. And then they cleared me. And the, the morning of the dive, the doc gives you a last minute check. And I had been through hell to get permission to go into this, into this enormous pool where they have all these mock-ups situated. And he goes, how do you feel? And I said, I feel fine, doc. And he goes, you'd tell me that if you were bleeding from the ears. <laughs> I was dying to do that because it's, it's a pool that's 100 feet by 200 feet by 40 feet deep everywhere. And it's where they have all the, it's the only place on earth that, or an environment where they can simulate the weightless aspects of what an EVA would be like. Mm -hmm. And so the astronauts go down, they're fully kitted out as if they're going outside the space shuttle in space. And the safety divers are just clustered around them. They're watching them like a hawk, you know, because anything goes wrong down there, they're they don't have the, the physical wherewithal to get back to the surface. 